टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट जनरल मोशन ऑफ अ कलेक्शन ऑफ पार्टिकल्स और जनरल मोशन ऑफ अ बॉडी इन द चैप्टर ऑन सेंटर ऑफ मास वी हैड सीन दैट सपोज वी आर गिवन अ कलेक्शन ऑफ पार्टिकल्स वेयर ईच पार्टिकल इज ऑफ मास एम आई एंड व्हेन वी राइट द न्यूटन सेकंड लॉ इक्वेशन फॉर ईच पार्टिकल वी गेट एफ आई इज इक्वल टू एम आई ए आई दैट इज ए आई इज द एक्सिलेशन ऑफ आई एथ पार्टिकल वेन यू सम ऑल ऑफ दीज आई इक्वेशन when you sum it over i then you get summation fi is equal to summation mi ai now each force fi consists of two part that is a force acting on a particular ith particle consists of the external force acting and the internal forces acting now when you sum over all the internal forces their summation will be zero because of newton's third law because each internal force will be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction so when you sum what you actually get suppose f12 is one of the force internal force then you will get f12 is equal to minus f21 so when you sum over all such forces this fi internal will go to zero so ultimately you will have that f net external the net external force acting on particle will be summation of all the external forces which will be equal to m a times acceleration of center of mass when you add this, this summation you get acceleration of center of mass so this approach is very useful for finding the motion of center of mass in fact we had used this uh, approach in many such questions now you see suppose uh, you are throwing a bat then what you can say suppose this dot black dot is the center of mass of this bat then this black dot will follow a trajectory of a parabola why because the only external force acting is the force due to gravity so the motion will be exactly similar to the motion of a particle of mass capital m which is under the influence of gravity force so this approach we had seen in the chapter on center of mass but this approach has got two limitations suppose i ask you what is the motion of say another particle which is say a distance of 10 cm from center of mass then using this approach it will be very difficult to find out the motion of that particle because this approach gives you very good idea gives you complete picture of the translation motion of center of mass about any other particle you will have to do some extra calculation but this will be difficult that is one limitation another very important limitation very i would say major limitation is that this approach does not tell you anything about the rotation of this bat i have thrown this bat in air it has gone and come down you would see that okay the center of mass has followed a very nice parabolic trajectory but simultaneously this bat has also gone some rotation so earlier this thicker portion was pointing upwards then it tilted and came in a particular orientation so this approach this equation is silent completely silent about the rotational aspect of the motion it does not give me any information about the orientation of the object with respect to a particular direction say in this direction say horizontal direction any direction so these are the two limitations of this approach now how to solve these um, uh, equations so that how to tide over how to get over these two limitations so we'll see a very important particular case and that particular case is that when we have been given a rigid body a rigid body is defined as any body such, such that the distance, distance between any two particles suppose this is my ith particle here this is my jth particle here the distance between these two particles is constant if it is constant i will say that okay rigid body in this diagram you see this is ith particle so this is ri is the position vector suppose this is my arbitrary origin o then ri is the position vector of this ith particle and rj is the position vector of this jth particle this ri minus rj this is the position vector of i with respect to j which i can also write as rij so the definition of rigid body is that rij modulus is constant that's all so once we come into this domain once i apply this thing that okay my body is rigid after that it becomes the life becomes very simpler equations become much simpler so what is the advantage which i am getting when this condition is given that rij 
modulus is constant you see what happens that when this is given what i can say i can use a very simple differentiation rule of vector differentiation suppose you have been given a dot product d by d and you have to find out the derivative d by dt of a dot b then what is d by dt a dot b it will be equal to da by dt dot b plus a dot db by dt suppose i make b is equal to a then what will happen this a dot b will become a square and you will get da by dt dot a so this i can write as two times a dot da by dt this formula most of you would be knowing this is simple differentiation rule for dot product of vectors so the same thing what i can write the modulus of any vector that is a square all these are vectors i have not given the symbol of a vector but assume that these are all vectors so modulus of a square is a dot a so when i differentiate this rij whole square what i will get this will be zero why because of this c is constant this is zero it means rij dot d by dt rij is equal to zero so what is the derivative of position vector that is velocity so so what is the equation which i am getting is that the position vector rij and dot product of velocity vector viz is zero so what does this say when you have been given that dot product of two vectors are zero what can happen either maybe that one of the vectors is zero or the vectors if both are non zero then they have to be perpendicular to each other in this case rij will not be zero because these two are different particles so this rij is not equal to zero and suppose this viz is also not zero suppose that my body is moving in such a particular way then what you can say this rij will be perpendicular to viz so if at all if this body has to be so there can be just two options either viz itself is zero or vij is perpendicular to rij so if this body has to move that is if this ith particle has to move with with respect to j then what can be the only direction it can only move in this direction either like this or like this it can only move in a perpendicular direction there are no other option for this poor ith particle so this is the main advantage if i am getting when we are concentrating only on rigid body motion why because the rigid body the moment a body is rigid what happens this distance is fixed this distance is fixed so the well this ith particle any arbitrary particle can move only in perpendicular direction with respect to any given jth particle so the same thing i will write just this i have written that this is my velocity vector so this is vij this has to be perpendicular now i will give you another reason why it has to be perpendicular okay, suppose this is my rij that is my ri is here rj is here suppose this vij is not perpendicular it is in say this direction then what will happen this v this velocity will have a component in this direction so because of this velocity what will happen this distance will stretch along but that cannot happen because the body is rigid body similarly the body this velocity cannot be in this direction also why because if the velocity is in this direction this distance which is r i j that is r this will contract now this can also not happen because the velo the body is rigid body so the moment you are given the condition that the body is rigid the only option for the particle that is v with respect to the vij that it has to be in a direction perpendicular to rij now this is a very very important clue how to tackle the subsequent problems what i can say that vij or let's just write v is perpendicular to r similarly since this is perpendicular and this distance r is fixed so what i can say what this v is doing this v is actually just moving in a circular manner because this r is also fixed so this r will become the radius of that circle so this v is perpendicular to r and this r is also constant that also i know so what is actually happening this is a say center this will become my r and this v is just moving in a circular ma manner 
with this center C and radius R. So V is perpendicular to R. Similarly, if say this rotation, this circular motion is say in this direction of Z axis, I can also say that V is perpendicular to V is perpendicular to omega. This is omega is the angular velocity. Why? Because my say omega is in omega k that is it is in z direction and this velocity is in x y plane so this v is also perpendicular to omega so basically what i am saying that v is perpendicular to r v is perpendicular to omega so what i uh, you can say that uh, what is the property so that suppose a new vector v is given and which is perpendicular to both r and the omega so what i can say I can say that actually this V is nothing but V is equal to omega cross R. You see, that's the same thing I have written that V i j is equal to omega cross R i j. You can just forget about this i j. This i j means this is the velocity of ith particle with respect to j. And why this is cross product? You can verify that this will be cross product this will satisfy all the properties of cross product this v so vij is omega cross rij so this is velocity of ith particle with respect to jth particle if i have to find out the complete velocity vi so what i can say vi is equal to vj plus vij very simple so i can write that vi is equal to vj plus omega cross rij because vij is omega cross rij now this equation is valid for any i and any j because I had taken my i and j as arbitrary particles. So if I denote my i as p because this is an any arbitrary particle say p I have taken and in place of j if I write say center of mass then what I will get that velocity of particle p is equal to velocity of center of mass plus omega cross r that is r is the position vector of this particle p with respect to center of mass so now this is a very important equation what it says is that any general motion of a body can be broken down into two particles suppose any arbitrary rigid body you have given me i need only two things number one thing is to give me a velocity of center of mass and another thing is to give me a velocity of that is angular velocity omega the moment you give me these two things I can find velocity of any arbitrary particles. So what I have done, the arbitrary motion of a rigid body, I have reduced it into two variables, velocity of center of mass and omega. Now you see this equation I have derived for an arbitrary jth particle. So this equation is valid for an arbitrary jth particle also. But I will be concentrating on center of mass. Why? Because center of mass has got certain other beautiful properties which are of great advantage when we are doing certain calculations. We, you would have seen in the chapter on center of mass also. That center of mass, although it is just a mathematical definition, mathematical construct, but it has got very, very useful properties for our numerical calculations. So I will be concentrating on the velocity of center of mass. So the same thing if I write it, what I will get is, I will get is that velocity of any particle is equal to velocity of center of mass plus omega cross r that is where r is the position of that particle with respect to center of mass. So this gives me an hint, this gives me an idea that any general motion of a rigid body can be broken down into two components. First component is the translation of center of mass which is denoted in this formula by VCM and the second component is rotation about an axis passing through center of mass so very important and this is so important that it has been even given a name and this was uh, this the name is chazel's theorem don't worry much about the name just look what does this theorem say this theorem says that you give me any arbitrary motion of a particle say suppose this is my rigid particle and this is doing all sort of jumble jumble here and coming here so what i can say any arbitrary motion suppose in this case also a table has been moved from position a to position b so any arbitrary motion it can be broken into two parts one part is this this is the translation this is the center of mass so this is the translation of the center mass 
and the second part is rotation about an axis this is the axis rotation about this axis now one important point this theorem does not say that this is unique i can represent the same translation by say going from here and then again coming here this is the same the initial position is same final position is same so basically this says that any motion can be represented by one translation plus one rotation this translation may or may not be unique that is immaterial but you see this theorem has made my life so much simpler why because we have dealt in detail about this translation of center of mass any body you give me i can find the translation of center of mass because of the very simple equation that f external is equal to m into a times center of mass so this portion we have already dealt with center of mass chapter so now we have to only concentrate and only find out about this thing rotation about an axis passing through center of mass so because of this theorem because of this breaking of a motion into two parts my life has become simpler